I've got a bunch of FPV radios ranging from under 50 bucks all the way up to $500. Whether you're getting into FPV or looking for an upgrade, in this video we're going to work out which is the best beginner radio. When buying an FPV radio, there's two schools of thought. Buy once and pay for it or buy what you need and upgrade a little later on. The first is where you just disregard price and just buy the best radio on the market with the view that you'll pay a lot up front but will save down the track. The second is saving your money and just buying what meets your needs at the present time and using that extra cash to invest into other areas of the hobby like goggles or more drones and batteries. Given the quality of radios on the market in 2022, buy once and pay for the privilege doesn't necessarily make sense because it is possible to find a balance between the two. If you ask Facebook, they're going to give you two answers, the TX16S or the Tango 2. In 2020 and for most of 2021, these two would have been the best advice. But when you account for the rise in maturity of Express LRS, and also that Ghost and Tracer are popular among racers and freestylers, and that Free Sky is non-existent in the market, there just isn't a point considering those two radios only. Before we choose a radio, you really need to choose a radio protocol, as this now dictates the radio you buy more now than it ever has before. The three main protocols you'll find when you go shopping for a bind and fly are Express LRS, Crossfire, and FR Sky or Free Sky. Now, I don't know how long manufacturers will continue to produce Free Sky based bind and flies, and given the horrible range, I'd recommend steering away from it. The choice is really down to Express LRS or Crossfire. Crossfire is more similar to Apple, where the software and hardware is all in a closed ecosystem. It's tried and true, but does come at a premium over Express LRS. Now, Express LRS is more like Android where it's open source, and the Express LRS team produces the firmware, but different manufacturers all produce the hardware. No matter which one you choose, you can add either of these to almost any radio through an external module bay. However, a number of radios now come with internal Express LRS, while only the Tango 2 has internal Crossfire. Let's look at the basic features we need on a radio for FPV. Well, FPV quadcopters at least. There are only three things in my mind that I consider to be absolutely essential. Hall sensor gimbals, which are now the standard gimbal you'll find on most radios once you're over the $75 mark. Under that, you're going to be using potentiometer gimbals and they'll be fine for your needs at that particular price point. Switches, you want to have two two position switches. One needs to latch or physically hold its position for arming and disarming. And you also want two three position switches for other features. These four switches will be your aux channels or modes. An external module bay because this is going to allow you to add an external transmitter module. So if you ever wanted to swap protocols, you just add the module for it. It doesn't matter whether it's a nano or a micro module, they mostly have the same capabilities. Anything else, uh, either a nice to have or access to requirements. A number of radios come with a multi-protocol module, which allows you to bind with a range of weird and wonderful protocols. Personally, I've only ever used the multi-protocol module to bind with FreeSky, but that was before Express LRS, which is now the dominant protocol on most bind and flies. In 2022, personally, I think these are unnecessary if you're going to be choosing Express LRS and really only a nice to have if you're going down the path of Crossfire. Most secondhand quads on the market will come with FreeSky or Crossfire, but I'd be prepared to put in my own receiver on it anyway. Let's get into the radios now. I'm going to go through a list of radios and give you a reason to buy and a reason to avoid. If it's not on this list, then I wouldn't consider it. At the end, I'll give you what I would buy at each of the different price points. So let's start with the cheapest. The Beta FPV Light Radio 2 SE Express LRS for $45. It's the cheapest Express LRS radio on the market. Although Beta FPV have forked the Express LRS firmware and I wouldn't consider looking at the FreeSky version. The Beta FPV Light Radio 3 for $60 gives you an external module bay for Crossfire or Tracer. And again, Beta FPV's fork of the Express LRS firmware is an issue. You can upgrade the gimbals to hole sensor from potentiometer for an extra $25. The Radio Master T8 Pro comes in at $89. It gives you a multi-protocol module and also an external module bay. But the detachable screen uses the external module bay and is a waste of its use. 
The Jumper T-Lite at $90 has hall sensor gimbals, a multi-protocol module, but the 1S power limits the maximum output of the external module bay, and it does appear to be discontinued. The Radio Master Zorro, ranging from $89 to $100, has ExpressLRS and HTX developer approval. AGO1 mini gimbals are coming soon, but at additional cost. And the internal battery only lasts two and a half hours. The Jumper T-Pro is $99 to $110, gives you standard battery life. There is no latching two position switch for arming and disarming, and Jumper have cut a lot of corners with this. The Radio Master TX12 comes in at $100, and I think it ticks all the boxes. It's the middle ground between the gamepad style and the TX16S. The iFlight Commando 8 comes in between $129 and $170. It also ticks all the boxes, but it's proprietary modules for ExpressLRS, and the fact that you have to swap the module out to add an external module bay for Crossfire or Tracer is an issue. The TBS Mambo at $139 is a great radio and ticks most boxes. Tracer isn't available on Bind and Flies, and Freedom TX does limit the maximum packet rate for ExpressLRS, and the FX version of the Mambo is $190. The Tango 2 is $160, and it is a great radio. However, you're limited to Crossfire only, unless you want to plug in something through the external module bay, but it's always mostly out of stock. The Jumper T18 version 2 at $155, where they've fixed a lot of the issues in the previous T18, but Jumper's reputation isn't the best. The Radio Master TX16S ranges from $180 to $500, and it's the choice radio for most pilots. You have more switches than you can poke a stick at. The cheapest version is $180, and the most expensive is the TX16X Max, with the AGO1 gimbals coming in around $500. Well, I buy most things you see on the channel, so I've put my money into each of these radios. Personally, I like the Mambo, and it's been my daily driver, and I haven't been able to fault it for my needs, except for the 500 megahertz packet rate on ExpressLRS, which it can't do. But for you, what I would consider is, if you're looking for a gamepad style radio, then the one to buy, in my opinion, is the Radio Master Zorro. Even with two and a half hour battery life, Radio Master have worked with the ExpressLRS and Edge TX developers to produce a solid radio in hardware and in firmware. You can choose from a CC2500 version for FR Sky, Multi Protocol, or an ExpressLRS version. I'll actually be switching to the Zorro as my daily driver. Now, if you like the size of gamepad radios but wanted a more traditional box form factor or wanted longer battery life than the Zorro, then my view is the TX12 is the one to choose. Even though it doesn't have an internal ExpressLRS module, you can add ExpressLRS to it through a micro TX, like the Happy Model ES24TX Pro for $40. Or you can even go down the path of Crossfire Tracer or Ghost. If you buy the Zorro or the TX12, you've got a great radio that's going to last you for years, and you don't have to pay a bunch of cash for it. It balances buying once with value for money, plus upgrading the AGO1 mini gimbals will mean the quality increases significantly. That said, if you do want to get a full-size radio that is the benchmark radio in this hobby, you can't go past the TX16S. You can get the standard hall sensor gimbal version, or if you want different colors and you like upgrading, you can go with the Max. Upgrading to the AGO1 gimbals is not necessary, but a really nice addition for pro pilots who can feel the difference. Switch it to Edge TX, and you're going to get the absolute most out of the radio. If you've got any questions about these radios or just wanted to bounce an idea off me, let me know in the comments below. If this has helped you, please do me a favour and hit the subscribe button. I'm Darren from Everything Micro FPV, and YouTube actually thinks this video is the one that you're going to want to watch next. Let's see if they're right.